Have you ever watched the beautiful, effortless flight of a soaring bird? Of course you have. People have always dreamed of flying like birds. The Wright brothers' first flight was in a glider. When they added an engine, it became the first airplane. And then bigger engines, noisier, more powerful engines were built. But some men couldn't forget the birds whose secret they longed to discover. For 40 years, those men labored. And today, their ships are so different from early models like this primary glider that they've changed the name. They call them sailplanes. What is a sailplane? Well, you could say it's an airplane without an engine. Only it is lighter, more graceful, more fun to fly. Great strength with light weight comes from skillful use of aluminum and straight grain spruce and paper thin plywood. The ship can take a lot of bouncing on rough ground. The fuselage is carefully streamlined and contains the standard flight controls. We have the control column, foot pedals for steering, and the instrument panel. Most pilots assemble their own planes. This glider club has bought a kit containing all the factory finished parts. Club members put the parts together in their spare time. Soon, they'll be flying their own sailplane. Sailplanes have soared as high as the loftiest peak in the world, the great Mount Everest. They've stayed up over 50 hours. They've flown 465 miles. And incidentally, boys, some of the records are held by girls. Now, let's find out why a sailplane doesn't need an engine to accomplish these things. The ship is pulled into the air at the end of a very long rope by an auto or a winch. When the sailplane is as high as the rope will allow it to go, about 300 feet, the pilot pulls the release, which drops the rope. There it goes, and his flight begins. The sailplane maintains flying speed by gliding down an imaginary slope of air. When the air is still, our craft will glide to the ground in a very few minutes. To fly higher or stay up longer, the pilot must find a rising current of air to carry him up. Thus, he can fall with respect to the air, but rise with respect to the ground. In the search for an upward current, flyers look for what are called dust devils or thermals, which are caused by sun-heated air rising from the earth, like smoke from a bonfire. Sometimes these warm currents end in piles of cumulus clouds called thunderheads. You've seen crows or hawks circling on a thermal, letting the warm air carry them up and up to dizzy heights. Well, sailplanes do the same thing, spiraling round and round in the updraft. But thermal soaring is for experts. Beginners ride on what are known as contour currents. When the wind blows against a hill or cliff, it has to rise in order to get over. So a sea breeze blowing against a rugged coastline is just what a sailplane pilot needs. It makes an ideal contour current. In turning about, the pilot always heads his ship into the wind to take full advantage of the updraft. Thermal and contour currents are the power of the sailplane. In favorable weather, we can stay aloft many hours and land whenever we wish. How would you like to fly in a sailplane? Right now, that is as soon as we can assemble it and get our launching gear ready for towing. The wings are supported by these streamlined struts. The whole ship weighs only 250 pounds and was carried here on a light trailer. There are plenty of helping hands, and our Skybird is soon made ready for flight. Now, let's sit in the cockpit and check the controls before taking off. Working the control column back and forth moves the elevators, which knows the ship up or down. This wheel controls the ailerons on either wingtip, which bank the ship on turns. We steer with these pedals, which are connected to the rudder. Then we test the hook, which releases the rope, by pulling the releases on the control panel. 
Yes, it works okay, so our assistant replaces the rope on the hook and signals rope fastened. And now to fasten our belt. All pilots do this for safety. The windshield comes next. This will reduce air resistance and still give us an excellent view forward to the side and down. Now our helper picks up the wingtip, waggles it to signal the towing crew that we are ready to make the flight. The slack is taken up and we're off. sudden rise? There's the breeze blowing up the bluff below. Now let's follow right down the brow of this cliff and stay in the updraft. of fellows in another ship. Expert flyers, too. Hey, let's follow them. We are nearing the end of the cliff. There's a strong lift here. A good place to turn. And here we go. It's smooth and quiet up here. Our alertness, our skill, these take the place of the propeller feel the slightest turbulence in the air. There's the south turn ahead. We've been making a figure eight, if you've noticed. In a sailplane, we learn things about flying that an airplane pilot never knows. Of all flying, sailplaning is the safest, the most thrilling. A dream of the ages come true. Sailplane, a ship on the wings of the wind. 